guys, in this video we're going to be taking a look at how to install a Microsoft WinPad Alpha uh, inside of a virtual machine or on a real computer. Now I'm sure most of you are not familiar with uh, WinPad or what it really is and basically uh, if you can you know, kind of tell from the name there, it's basically uh, a version of Windows that was meant to run on tablet computers. and this was actually way before Windows CE started development. This started development in the summer of 1992. And this was basically when Microsoft was beginning to develop a version of Windows that would run on tablet computers. Um, and by 1994, they had actually signed seven computer OEMs to begin work on this WinPad project. Now, these included Compaq, Motorola, NEC, and Sharp. Now, the reason why WinPad didn't really take off and uh, its development was like actually cancelled was because it was really ahead of its time and because of this it was not able to run on the hardware that the OEMs provided and after many discussions with uh, their partners and focus groups Microsoft actually cancelled this project in the autumn of 1994 and for those of you who want I will link this whole article that I'm getting all this uh, information from down below it's uh, worth a read if you're interested in this kind of stuff but uh, still WinPad never really saw the light of day outside of Microsoft and many people don't really know what it is uh, but I have actually uncovered a uh, alpha version of this and I will be linking a download link down below for those of you who actually want to install this for yourself and you know take a look at it uh, now for this to work you are going to need a uh, working the Windows 3.1 installation and the reason for that is, is because Windows 3.1 is basically the uh, sort of code base for this uh, WinPad uh, sort of operating system and if you don't have Windows 3.1 it's not going to be able to install at all so you're going to want to go down below in the video description there will be a download link to a zip file with I believe only like five uh, floppy disk images and you're going to want to turn on your Windows 3.1 virtual machine and you're going to want to connect disk number one uh, into your floppy disk drive alright now once you have that selected you just want to open up the file manager from Windows 3.1 and then you want to click on the A drive up here and it's going to load the files off of the A drive and now you want to find setup.exe right here and just double click it and uh, as you can see at the top it says WinPad Alpha Software Development Kit and it says welcome to the Microsoft WinPad Alpha SDK setup program and it's a very simple installation uh, except for a few parts which I will get into later in the installation because they don't come in until later but at this screen obviously you just want to click on continue and you want to select the test environment you cannot choose development environment uh, but test environment is all that we need to actually run the software and the default install directory is uh, C colon slash HHWin which I'm guessing stands for handheld windows uh, so you can change it if you want I'm just gonna leave it uh, as HHWin and you can then you just want to click on continue and here it's just basically saying that if you want to use WinPad with a pen tablet then the tablet must be installed before running setup now I'm not really sure of any tablet pen that will properly work with uh, the WinPad Alpha software development kit but you just want to click on continue if you happen to have something that would work with this um, I guess install it or I guess plug it in right now but uh, it's saying that you need to restart setup after installing your pen tablet but if, if you I mean we're not going to worry about that right now so just uh, click on continue and now it's going to actually begin installing and now it's going to ask you to insert disk 2 into drive A. and once you have that inserted just click on OK and it's going to continue installing and then you need disk 3 and there's actually only four disk images uh, so it's, a, it's again a very quick installation and then once you have disk 3 inserted just press OK then it's going to ask you for the final disk disk number 4 uh, obviously just do the same thing and then press OK it's going to finish installing and it's going to say setup succeeded you have only installed the WinPad handheld software and it's going to ask you to run setup from the CD-ROM to install the, the development environment now we don't have a, a setup CD-ROM so the development environment I'm not really sure if you can actually access that if any of you guys know anything about that uh, please be sure to like post it down in the comments or if you have like a 
uh, old CD ROM uh, like image of the the uh, WinPad development environment. Um, I would definitely like to take a look at that as well. But it, it also says to refer to install.wri on the CD ROM, uh, which again we don't have that CD ROM, but it's okay if you just press on the OK button. It's just going to close out. And if you try to uh, double click on HH shell, it's going to give you a file error because you, you actually have to run this from uh, the MS DOS prompt when Windows isn't running. So you, you just have to click on close and OK because it's going to give you another error because it can't find one of its components to actually run. And now you want to close out of the file manager by going up here to this menu and just click on close. And then do the same thing with the program manager. Just want to go up here, select close. It will say this will end your Windows session, and press OK. And now you're going to have to insert an MS DOS boot disk. And if you don't already have one of those, I will have it linked down below. All right. Once you have that inserted, I believe the directory is hhwin. So we have to go up one uh, directory to the C drive. Let me just check here. I believe it's uh, yeah, it's hhwin. So if you type in cd hhwin. You're going to go in here and now you want to type in win and then use slash s. And you have to use this switch or it will give you an error. Uh, once you have this, just press enter. It's going to load. It looks like it's loading Windows 3.1, but you can see uh, we are in a completely different environment. All right, and here we are in the WinPad Alpha interface. Now, this, uh, for some reason, the whole interface is like off center to the left for some reason. I'm not really sure why. It might be just. Uh, the way that it installs on a virtual machine or something like that um, but yeah this is basically WinPad uh, it's you know completely different looking from Windows 3.1 but you can actually use it with a mouse here as you can see I can you know move it around I can use it with a keyboard as well it would probably work better with a you know stylus or a pen or something like that but you can't really use that uh, with a virtual machine at least as as far as I know so I'm not really sure uh, how well that's going to work, but of course, if you have one of those, I mean, you can try it and just you know see how it works. I'm not really going to be going through like every single feature that this has, um, at least not in this video, because uh, there are a lot of things that uh, WinPad offers, and it's also very buggy and it crashes a lot, so it's kind of hard uh, to record the whole interface without it crashing. But uh, I'll just see what we can get done right here and I'm, I'm not going to be I'm just going to you know try to open up you know just probably these like main uh, applications down here at the bottom so let's just open up this address book at the bottom and this is basically a small little address book that would run on your tablet uh, and you know th they had to make all these applications small and really strip down from a you know full version of Windows 3.1 because it was meant to be used with a stylus and it wasn't meant to be used with a keyboard or a mouse, and it wasn't going to be um, running on, you know, the the powerful hardware at least for the time that Windows 3.1 would run on. So um, they had to make it really stripped down. That's also probably why it's in black and white because there were no, like no displays that uh, could produce color that would run on a tablet. Um, but this is basically an address book, and you can go through here. These might actually be real people that worked. Um, on the WinPad project, uh, but you see there, um, like you have uh, like your name, last and first name, uh, your phone number over here, uh, and if we just like double click on this, we can actually edit uh, the address and their company and their job title and, and everything. We can go through here and you know change their uh, phone numbers around and and everything and. Yeah, and this is also this is uh, handwriting recognition, which it doesn't really work that well um, in the address book for some reason. But there is in the welcome demo, it, it works a lot better, which I'll I'll show you in just a minute here. And yeah, that's uh, that's basically the address book. It, you can go through here. You can actually show by uh, certain certain things, like it, it, if you want to show by last name, first name, company, or, or email, just like you know group things together. We also have tabs like along the side. Uh, that you can go through here and uh, see different contacts, which is kind of cool. And yeah, that's that's basically just a very simple address book. Uh, so let's just quit out of that, and you can quit by just clicking on that button at the top of the application. 
and for the welcome application which is right here you just open this up it's just a basic demo that tells you how to use WinPad um, and it's also kind of funny that they that they actually have to explain to you how to tap a button it says to tap a button press the pen tip on the button and then lift the pen which just shows you how old and basic that, that this software was I mean this was like 1992 uh, so I mean tablets weren't re weren't really that popular uh, so we had to I, I mean I, I guess they had to tell people how to use a, a stylus but yeah we can click on more it shows you everything it can do it can actually synchronize data with your PC which is pretty cool um, and go through here uh, and this is just a basic on-screen keyboard here you can type in you know just like you would on an actual keyboard and if you actually have like a real keyboard plugged in it does work as you can see I, I'm, I'm typing on my real keyboard you can click done uh, this I believe is the sort of phone dialer type of thing so we can dial a phone number it's not like it doesn't really actually call anyone but this is like if you're gonna enter someone's phone number to call on your phone or something like that uh, but you can enter in someone's phone number here uh, click done and probably the most interesting way of inputting data is through this right here which is the handwriting recognition which is basically going to convert what you write into actual um, text that the computer can understand so I'm just going to try to write out MJD and we'll see if it actually picks it up I'm not sure because this is again really buggy software but you can see it does take a while um, maybe it's not even going to do it at all but yeah see here it goes but it it thinks that I wrote M1CD but it got two letters right and it thought the J was a 1 and a C and it just it, it is again very buggy it takes a while to actually process um, that that data or, or that you know handwriting recognition we can just click on the back button here and we'll like erase that and we can try it again just try it one more time and see if it gets it right and it didn't get it right that time either so I'm not really sure what like like how how accurate this thing is obviously it's not really working that well but but yeah that is probably the most interesting inputting uh, or the input method for WinPad is uh, handwriting recognition and again it just goes through here it just tells you it like actually shows you how to uh, delete incorrect letters which is basically what we just did um, overwriting incorrect letters you can just draw over the uh, the incorrect character and all that uh, but yeah it's just like a whole welcome demo that shows you how to use uh, WinPad so let's just close out of that I don't think you can actually close there's not a close button but we'll just open up the calendar um, and you see here's here's one of the errors that it'll just you know throw up because uh, it apparently HH SOS SOS TSK cause a general production fault so if you click restart it'll attempt to restart the application most of the time that doesn't work um, as you can see I guess we're not gonna open up calendar and the whole thing just crashed but uh, yeah let's see if we can when use personal computing we'll, we'll say uh, I wonder if you go through this yep now it's just now it's all completely gone alright so I just uh, restarted the virtual machine uh, so I think that that error happens when you have like two like two applications open at the same time which I did with the, the uh, welcome program and the calendar so let's just try to open the calendar and all right you know maybe the calendar is just not gonna work because it's giving me the same error uh, all right let's, let's just try the mail one then now the mail one's not gonna work all right I'm gonna restart the virtual machine again Alright, so I'm not going to try to open up the calendar application again because I guess it's just not going to work. Uh, so let's just try the mail application. And you can see here, it just looks like a very basic mail um, application. I mean, I guess we can't we can't really demo it here because I'm not really sure how, how you would like link a uh, email address to this. Um, but let's say uh, that we click on new and we can actually, um, I guess, send an email. So let's just try... Uh, you know, gmail at gmail.com uh, enclosure actually no that's the subject I probably shouldn't make that the subject um, priority okay so here's two and oh wow look at this there's actually some 
people in here that I wonder what happened if you were to send these people like an email because it does have like their actual uh, MS mail which is Microsoft mail so let's just just uh, send it to to this person and uh, there's all these random people apparently you can send to the same person twice which might have been a, a kind of an issue as you can see there and it's not letting me click on the other one so we're gonna send it to, to, to this person like this more than one time which is a lot uh, so just click on OK and you can see we got all these people uh, subject I'll say WinPad uh, I have found a WinPad alpha exclamation point and uh, how you send and you can add like a CC and a BCC if you want you can change the like priority of the email and the receipt and the receipt request I just don't know how you actually send it I mean maybe here's an eraser I guess it's just like array oh no this is actually for the uh, touch um, like recognition thing so let's say that, that I want to write hi right here And see, let's see if it actually will process it into in text. And you can see here's a uh, your actual standard keyboard. And I, I just don't know how you send it. It's probably right in front. Maybe it's this button. Oh no, no, here it is, right here. Send. Okay, this message will be in Outlook, waiting to be sent. Okay, so it couldn't actually uh, send messages. It would go to the outbox, and I guess it would like uh, like you have to do it from your computer. But you could still like write email messages on the go uh, you can click on connect and here's switchboard which I, I guess will like connect it to uh, certain devices and over here we have like a I guess like what they thought of like a tablet would look like sort of like some concept art which is pretty cool um, desktop computer everything and more and we can let's send mail is Microsoft mail we'll say yes and it can't, it can't find mappy.dll so we'll just click restart and we get this HH mail SV that says you must have MS mail installed on your desktop machine for WinPad desktop mail to work if you cannot run MS mail right now then WinPad desktop mail will not be able to send and receive mail so it actually tried to, to do like a certain transfer here which is pretty cool uh, and it just failed because it, it couldn't actually connect to the program on the PC but that's basically WinPad mail. I'll just close out of that. Um, I think we just uh, see. I don't know how that you close that. Do you just click on this here? Okay. Well, that just brings it back to here, so we can click quit. And now it brings this up again. So uh, let's just try to open up Notes and hope that it doesn't crash. Uh, oh yeah. So I, I I guess you can have two applications open at the same time. I just don't know why Calendar doesn't want to work. All right. So we have this very interesting note called the WinPad location. Uh, created on February 28th of 1994 and if we open this up uh, it actually shows you like the someone drew this like a, a map of the US and WinPad was crafted here in Redmond with an arrow pointing to Redmond Washington uh, so that's that's very cool like a note from the uh, developers of it or something like that uh, and we can, you know create like a new note uh, it's right out a standard hello world saying here all right so we can do this and I guess these are like the pages up here or something or no these are just like the different notes that would go through and I guess it just like saves it automatically uh, here's a subject you can type in you can type in a subject uh, you can go through and you know view uh, all your all, all your different notes you can also type out text of course if you want to uh, so, so let's just quit that and this switchboard thing is still open maybe exit will close that or no exit just like will exit uh, you, you can choose to exit shell win pad or cancel so I'm not gonna do that right now uh, if, we, if we open up the to do app this is like what looks like a uh, sort of like uh, reminders thing as you can see we have another note from one of the developers you can uh, on 3 1494 he put in get babysitter for 315 concert and you can edit that if you want uh, we can create a new one I guess you just write down here uh, it might process it in a text yeah see today 
there's your text but it didn't really go on like the screen all the way so it shows two lines um, you can also I think change it to the other um, like actual keyboard method I just, I just don't know how you do that though it's it's not letting me do that here uh, but we have a today view this week um, June goals I guess and I can't really read that sideways and spare time okay so we just just quit out of that and a clock right here 4 22 p.m. Uh, Monday June 16th 2014 which is when I'm making the video and we have a clock up here the Microsoft logo down there you can actually turn on or off daylight savings so if we turn that on it'll you know bring it up an hour turn it off it'll bring it back down an hour and the alarm and turn it on set an alarm for 12 a.m. or you know change the time or whatever which is kind of cool um, and clip up here uh, using the clip box. Clip box is a temporary information storage area. Oh, I, I guess like uh, standard copying and, and pasting. Yeah, it's got copy and, and paste right here. They just call it the clip box for some reason. I guess they didn't call it the clipboard yet. Um, so let's close out of that. You can undo like any of your like previous actions system wide. As you can see, I'm like doing this here. Uh, so we can just close out of that. Again, there's no close button, so I guess it's just going to stay open. And our last thing is this little arrow uh, right here, which actually opens up a few more applications. Uh, we also have the version number up here, which is 1.00.3203. And so we checked out um, addresses. Closing, I think, just closes that. It also gives you an error message that says um, some DLL file error zero. And it wants you to choose an address. Okay, we'll choose a... Uh, We'll choose this one and unable to start synchronization. So that was probably some with uh, synchronization. So we checked address, we checked that. Sync is probably going to be the same thing, but it can't find a, a uh, file. So it's going to give us that same error and this and then this same thing. So it's not going to allow us to sync. Um, Samp sock, I guess that's a sample thing of some kind. We can't load it. A, oh gosh. Sample select its application. Send help us OP1, you're our only hope. Again, some more uh, you know developer text in here. Um, and we can't actually, I guess it would be like to send from one tablet to another or something like that. Um, we'll just quit that, we'll go in here. Uh, run, just runs like a file name. This was obviously just for developers, not really for the consumer because I don't. I don't really think consumers are gonna like know, you know, the, the the file names of the applications. So yeah, just like a very simple run command type of thing. Uh, so we can click cancel. Um, so we have that remote gives us an error, but it says up here remote activation app. So maybe, and now it's gonna open up the same syncing thing again. So maybe they would want to like activate this just like they they do Windows now with like a whole product key thing. So. Maybe that's what that was for, to like send, you know, uh, remote activation to Microsoft or something like that. Notify, um, I don't know, it just got three three uh, exclamation points. Uh, I cannot actually type anything, so I just was pressing OK closes that. Find is just going to find an application. Uh, calculator just opens a very basic looking calculator that can do, you know, certain actions. Um, 789 times 6 is 4734. It actually shows you uh, your like list of actions up here. So you did 789 times 6 equals this. If we clear, or well, if you do AC, it'll you know uh, get rid of it. But you know it shows that whole thing up here, which is pretty cool. We can go into switchboard, which was that thing that you know this thing just shows you how to connect to to uh, different devices and stuff. Options, uh, here's here's a few options for, you know, you can go personal options, you know, put your name and all that, screen, uh, choose the orientation. I wonder if this will actually fix uh, the error that we were having. Oh yeah, see now it's like a little bit different looking. Uh, sound is just for, you know, sounds and stuff like that. Got international password power sort. We got password here. Uh, power functions like 
you know, wake the device and stuff like that. All right, we also have power and storage here, which if you just go into that, it actually shows you the status of your battery here uh, and the amount of storage that you've used, I guess, on your machine, which it says we've used like almost 100%. Uh, same with the battery as well. You, you can also choose a uh, sleep timer and you can choose to actually sleep the machine after one minute of uh, inactivity and you can also change it up to I guess 10 minutes is the max that, that you can put it up to and you can also choose archiving options you can mark items old after two weeks one month two months six months or one year uh, so we can just get, uh, get out of that by pressing OK uh, work week here basically I guess sets your work day like your hours that you're at work or something like that from so the default in here is from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. you can of course you know add an hour uh, you know subtract an hour or whatever uh, your you can actually set when your week starts on so for you know for some people it starts on Monday for some people it starts on Sunday I'll just leave it on on Sunday and you can actually change your default alarm time as well uh, from five minutes to ten minutes and so on uh, so we can you know just get out of that uh, synchronize here is for that uh, synchronizing panel that didn't really work very well this is uh, some some options for it you can uh, choose if you're on like a local connection you can choose uh, to automatically synchronize and if you're on a remote connection, uh, you can choose to automatically synchronize as well, which is uh, disabled, I guess, because you don't want to, um, you know, send your personal data over a remote connection. Uh, and something called Schedule Plus Synchronize, which I guess will synchronize your schedule with your PC or something like that. So we'll just get out of that. And our last thing in here is Card, which... So this is just basically like a few card options. Is this might actually be for like a PCM CIA card or something like that? I'm not really sure if this would use like an SD card. You know, it's a little bit too old to be using something like that. But uh, you can choose uh, to actually initialize the card by uh, formatting it or making expansion store. I, I wonder what happens if you actually click on these buttons. I guess it doesn't do anything because there's no card plugged in. Uh, you can choose power on or off. Uh, and notification preferences. You can get a message when a card is inserted or removed. And you can also enable beeps, which I guess will just like play a sound uh, when a card is inserted or removed. Uh, and I believe that is the last uh, panel in here. We can close out of that. Um, and yeah, that's that's options. Help is the help application. Mail server we already looked at. Desk MTSP is the oh we also looked at this this is like the mail uh, retrieval thing uh, the clock right here it's uh, to do exit and notes um, so yeah I'm just gonna click on exit now and we're gonna click on exit shell and that just closes the whole thing and brings you back to DOS so that's yeah guys that's basically Microsoft WinPad Alpha um, in its early development stages uh, all the links that you're going to need to install this will be down below um, and, uh, yeah, just thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and, as always, I will see you in the next video.